Once again, we're doing something in the MR1 that I've never done before. In this video, I am going to machine this knife blank. This is stainless steel. So I've never machined stainless steel in the MR1. Everybody says it's possible. I'm going to give it a try. The specific alloy of this is CPM 154. So this is, my, from my understanding, a crucible steel and it is some pretty cool stuff. So if you can machine CPM 154 in the MR1, that's, that's pretty good. Um, so let me show you this program running. Okay guys, I'm gonna create quite a big mess here just for YouTube, I'm gonna run the door open. And also, when it finally cuts through on the profile, I do not have tabs because I want this to be a really clean cut so my customer doesn't have to do any additional work. The downside is the chunks lift up and get caught. I can't believe I haven't busted the tool, but it's kind of violent when, when it gets close to the bottom here. Now I'm running, like I said, 8,000 inches a minute, 70, no, I'm running 8,000 RPMs, 77 inches a minute, full width slotting, I am 20 thousandths deep on the depth of cut, chip load is 0.0024, this is a four flute end mill that I got on AliExpress. This end mill is made to cut hardened steel, stainless, and other tool steels. So it cuts really great until the end. I'm actually going to let this whole thing run so you can watch the entire thing in real time just so you have an idea of how long it takes. Now I never thought I could cut stainless steel this fast. When I did the feed and speed wizard it told me I needed to go like 8 inches a minute. I'm going 77 inches a minute. Um, so my theory is you push it till the end mill breaks then you back it off. So far it hasn't broken, and I don't want to break it because I don't have any extra material, and if I gouge the edge, this is no good. On a knife, the profile is very important. So gouging up, you know, an edge means the profile is no good. Customer paid for this material. So I really don't want to break an end mill. I almost want to back it off just because he paid for it, and I don't want to, ugh. I'm so torn. It just sounds so good right up until the end. I mean, I could stop the program, try to break all the pieces off, and then let it continue. That's an option. But what if I move the part, which I shouldn't. It's held in there really good. All right, a couple more passes, and we're going to have some chunks flying. I'm gonna move so I'm no longer like exposed here. Camera's gonna stay here, but I'm gonna move. Also, you guys can play this at one and a half times speed, two times speed, whatever you want. But I do wanna capture the entire process. Just so, like I said, what it's really like.
close to the bottom. So far it's 4 minutes and 40 seconds on the machine time. Okay, I think the next pass that back corner will come off. Maybe. Oh, I just able to flick it up. One less piece. See what I mean? That freaks me out. Ugh. Whew. But it's never broken the end mill yet. You can see what I mean. Um, if you guys have suggestions for dealing with that, let me know. Um, okay, let me quick pull this off. Stuck to my piece, what the world? <laughs> All right, there you go. Oh, and I measured these holes. So these holes I milled to exactly 0.255. Um, so that way they're perfect for his pins. There you go, guys. Also, if you are a knife maker and you want somebody to cut blanks for you like this to save yourself a lot of time, hit me up. If you go to the website, you can actually upload your file and you can get a quote. So, becktools.com. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. If you got anything out of this video, give me a thumbs up. That really helps. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section. I read all the comments and uh, I'd love to have a conversation. All right, guys, see you next time.